morning, General Directors, and thank you very much for your participation in this initiative. We have invited you here today because your organizations have crucial impact and insight into the education of the youth of tomorrow. And it is a big honor for us to have the opportunity to listen to your knowledgeable and important contributions when it comes to understanding and tackling this issue. Today, the interview will be coordinated by myself, Jana Aschi, Karen Menz, Milaf Alkartani, Sarah Thompson, and Maura Chernia. Before we start with the questions, I would like to outline who Mr. Rodzera and Ms. Mattarella are. So Mr. Paolo Rodzera is a political science graduate with an economic international address at the La Sapienza University of Rome. He began working in 1991 at UNICEF Italy, starting off in the field of development education, then in the International Mediterranean Group and afterwards in the presidency and the directorate general. In 1996, Mr. Rodzera organized and coordinated the International Youth Forum for the World Food Summit. In between 1999 and 2000, he collaborated with FAO. Since 2009, Mr. Rodzera has been professor of the Master in Human Resources Management and Organization on Corporate Social Responsibility at Lewis. In 2008, he was appointed head of Human Resources Office and went on to act the role of interim general manager the first four months of 2015 before being appointed the new general director of UNICEF Italy. In December, 2012, he obtained the executive master in business administration at Lewis in Rome. Ms. Daniela Fatarella is an expert in social marketing, communication, fundraising, and planning. From 1999 to 2004, she was the first national director of CBM or the Christian Blind Mission for which among other things, she took care of the Italian startup and later on became the marketing and fundraising director at Greenpeace Italy. In 2004, Ms. Fattarella started working for Save the Children Italy on Lus as marketing and communication director. In 2015, following the considerable growth of the organization and with the aim to further development, the board of directors decided to establish for the first time in history, the position of deputy director general of which Daniela Patarella was called to chair, and in January 2020, becoming general manager. We would like to give special thanks to Mr. Thompson, the head teacher, Mr. Mongari, the middle and high principal, Ms. Bell, the middle and high head of curriculum and assessment, and Ms. Gobena, the communication officer at Rome International School, for their great help and support in making the conference a reality. Without further ado, we will now move on to the interview. So when trying to come up with a solution to a problem, we tend to trace back to the roots of the issue itself and see how it first came about. This first question does just that and is addressed to both directors. How would you define gender discrimination? And do you feel that there are certain areas um, of society in which gender discrimination is still a prominent issue? If so, then why do you think this is the case? So thank you very much for the question, but especially thank you very much for inviting me to be here today together with my colleague and friend Paolo Rosera from UNICEF. Uh, I'm starting with your very first question. Actually, let me say that uh, we say that gender discrimination uh, refers to a kind of discrimination which is based on a person's sex or gender which means that actually when a sex or gender is uh, constantly prioritized uh, over another and not all people are recognized because of their values and capacities. So if I tend to turn it uh, in a positive way, we have gender equality when all people, including all girls and boys, women and men have equal rights and they can fulfill their potential. But when, I mean, we try to understand why it is so crucial, uh, I just want to, um, to take the chance to describe the importance of gender um, equality through the words of uh, a girl. Uh, she's, her name is uh, Haria. She's 12 years old and she's a Syrian refugee living in Lebanon. And when she uh, describes to Save the Children field people on uh, the, her situation, um, she's very uh, straightforward in saying that her life uh, is very much uh, uh, influenced by her being a girl. Because while she was in Syria and she could play and be happy, when she moved and she has to fled the world together with her family and she moved in a refugee camp uh, in Lebanon, 
after attending a school for a while, then she was forbidden to go to school from her father because she was harassed during the uh, the path going and coming back from school. Now she's obliged to stay at home and especially her father is thinking to um, get her married and she's only 12 years old because child marriage is seen by her father as a way of protecting her. Of course, Haria and her mother are very against that, but I mean, uh, this shows how the life of these girls is influenced by the fact that she's a girl. And now within the program of Save the Children, it is taken care to fight against child marriage. But I mean, you can find millions of cases like that throughout all the world. And actually, I mean, uh, when we are thinking uh, where and uh, which is the period in which uh, uh, gender equality is more sensitive, uh, we can say that there are countries in the world, uh, especially countries that are part of South Asia, Middle East, um, Southern Africa, are much more, let's say, um, influenced by uh, uh, the gender issue. Actually, we also have to think that it's especially in the age of puberty, so between 10 and 19 years old, that you start uh, seeing the question rising. So when a girl starts uh, becoming a little bit more adult, uh, when you should uh, enter in the age in which you have more freedom uh, to attend school, uh, to discover the world, uh, to have friendship, uh, for many girls throughout the world, uh, it becomes to be the period in which you have less free freedom and in which social norms uh, condemn you to be uh, in a much more silent place. Uh, so you have less access to education, uh, you are much more obliged to stay at home and take care of your family and siblings. Uh, and this is happening uh, throughout all world. Uh, and we can say that even in uh, countries where we think this is not the case, like Italy, you may see in many different fields from uh, politic political to business uh, to social world, uh, where you have uh, really less women and girls that are really having the, the, the equivalent positions and weight of men. I'd like to close this very first, uh, uh, let's say, interv uh, interview by saying that uh, um, we have made, of course, great progress uh, in the condition of uh, women and girls, uh, starting from the Beijing Conference in 1995. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the governments uh, took the decision uh, of really uh, enhancing gender equality throughout all the world. Uh, and if we take only a, a, a number today, a girl uh, has twice the possibility to survive uh, over the age of five uh, of girls that are born uh, 25 years ago. But if we look at the COVID and the pandemic, uh, we do see that the world uh, uh, has become much more unequal uh, for many people, but especially for girls. And this is something that we really have to address. So today, even then before, gender equality is a prominent issue. Thank you. Thank you. Now on to you, Mr. Rozzera. Uh, you're muted. Thank you. I'm really honored to stay here with you and thank you for the invitation. It's a really honor to stay with you and uh, with Daniela Fatarella from Save the Children. But I can answer that gender discrimination can be defined uh, as any distinction, exclusion or restriction perpetuated on the basis of one person's gender. Gender-based discrimination disproportionately affects women and girls worldwide and hampers the achievement of the full potential of everyone in a society. Gender discrimination start at birth, affect the girls and women of all life course and are transmitted on to the next generation. The, the reality continues to show that girls, adolescents and women in their diversity still face the greater disadvantages because of their gender. Gender inequality also affects uh, boys and men due to harmful masculinities promoting ideas of manhood that are predicated on taking risk, being strong, not seeking help, feeling entitled, and ex uh, accepting power or dominance over women. Gender discrimination permits all levels, 
Uh, it is present in uh, personal, family, and social relationships, but also in institutions and in public policies, and affects not only women and girls, but also men and boys. There is no one isolated cause of gender discrimination, as they are multiple, interlinked, uh, deep-rooted, and complex. A key role in perpetuating gender discrimination is played by social norms, values, and attitudes about gender roles that are deeply rooted in every society, in every culture. In many cases, uh, uh, this value often include the belief that women and girls are inferior or weaker than men and boys, that, uh, that women are poor uh, decision makers, that men have no role or skills for raising children, that having a son is a, a better economic and social value than having a girl child. While gender roles and convention have changed through the years and we have a lot of uh, improvement, gender discrimination, gender stereotypes, uh, and pervasive gender norms have been perpetuated. Over. Thank you very much for these insightful thoughts and examples. It really makes you think about how the impact of gender inequality can be subtle or even huge. The progress that we have made and even the considerably long road that we still have in changing the norms and stereotypes that hold true in society today. For the next question, I would like to pass the word to my colleague, Milaf. Thank you, Jana, and thank you, General Directors. The second question is addressed to General Director Fatarella. Why should we talk about gender inequality if within the majority of the society, it is not perceived as the main concern or not a thing to discuss about? So thank you very much for this question. And actually, I think that the question has a, a lot of uh, answers inside the, the question itself. So just a couple of uh, data to um, acknowledge uh, the problem. So 59% uh, uh, of uh, illiterate people in the world are women. And if we think about uh, uh, a country in war and all countries in war, 90% of girls are out of school. So why do we have to talk about gender equality yet? Because this is a simple number which provides you the straightforward answer. And unfortunately, I mean, uh, seems that uh, uh, not always it is so uh, known that if you don't invest uh, in girls and, uh, and women and in girls starting from the very first ages as Paulus just mentioned, then you lose uh, the human capital that they can bring throughout life. And uh, uh, we all, all have a role to play. Uh, civil society, government, yourself as very young uh, and active people. And the, the role to play, to, to play is that uh, we have to promote uh, gender equality uh, to ensure that no harms comes to children and to advance a vision of a better world. I'd like to quote again a girl from one of our program. She's Ragad, she's 16 years old and she lives in Lebanon. And she says, I never understood this discrimination between men and women, boys and girls. Do we want a society where girls have no education and are forced to get married when they are young? Equality should not be an insult. On the contrary, it is a sign that the society is functioning with a strong foundation. And I think she says all. Then let me say something more. There is a sort of illusion of parity between boys and girls. And there are a lot of experiments and tests which have been conducted on very young children. If you ask children between the age three to five, who is the smartest people you know, person you know, Boys tend to say he's a man, girls tend to say he's a woman. Then you ask the very same question when they are age six. And then girls tend to say it's a man. So men still thinking they are the smartest and girls start thinking men are smarter than them. 
This is where children are influenced by social norms, by trends, by what they hear from media, from uh, their parents. Uh, if you think about the media advertising, even today, you may have a woman who's cooking and a man who's reading. This is how you create stereotype. Uh, and this is how you create stereotype to, throughout all the society. They're of course affecting uh, much more, let's say, girls uh, on their basic rights uh, in many countries of the world, but they are also affecting the development and the full potential of girls within our countries. So numbers on a, on a side and stereotype and social norms on the other tell you why we still have to tackle this issue. And again, now more than ever, we have to do it because COVID is accelerating all inequalities, including gender. Thank you. Thank you very much for your response. Um, I'll now ask my colleague, Karen, to continue with the interview. Thank you, Milov. I would like to thank you, general directors, for your participation. It is often, okay, it is often debated what actions must be taken in order to achieve a society with gender equality due to the delicacy of this issue. This question is directed to both Ms. Fattarella and Mr. Rozera. What actions, in your opinion, would allow a society to further achieve gender equality? So thank you again for this critical question. I mean, there are, again, it's a holistic approach that you have to develop to tackle gender equality. Of course, uh, we do believe that governments are, are the very first responsible and are accountable for uh, for this equality, why? Because uh, uh, human rights laws uh, are developed by governments and they have to be uh, uh, made respected by government itself. So there is a very strong uh, role uh, that institutions have uh, in terms of uh, um, laws, but also in terms of uh, uh, tools and policies that can uh, support gender equality. Very few, but I mean, I think a straightforward example. Um, now that we have uh, millions of people out of school, uh, one of the things that the government uh, have to really take care about is to be sure that girls uh, will come back to school, not only boys. So again, that's something that it is, uh, that governments uh, have to be accountable for. As well as if we talk about schools, uh, governments uh, are the ones who should also take care about training uh, uh, teachers, both men and women, uh, in the correct, let's say, way to address uh, gender inequality within schools. But also, it's not only governments, it's of course uh, communities, when you have to fight again, uh, let's say, mentality, culture, social norms, uh, you have to really involve the whole communities, which is made by every, every, everybody, by parents, uh, by children. Uh, and this is probably the most critical thing that you have to do, because if you support a behavioral change, uh, this also will transform itself uh, then in a norm in the future, or even more in a better habit. And you also have a very strong role to play. You children uh, throughout all world, uh, young adults, uh, through the participation. So what I see more happening also in many countries of the world, also through the help of organizations like Save the Children or UNICEF, is the participation of children and of, uh, of young girls. Uh, there are voices of leaders uh, that are raising throughout all the world uh, and that are standing to defend their own rights. Um, I just want to close by saying that the power that young can have in changing this is exceptional. I cannot forget uh, listening to a girl in Egypt. Uh, it happened like uh, seven, eight years ago. So it's a long time ago, but I will never forget. This little girl, 10 years ago, she was in a Save the Children program and she explained to me how she uh, told to her mother um, to protect uh, herself and then her sister for genital, from genital mutilation. 
and she was only 10 years old. And the way she was so powerful in talking about her right to health, uh, to a productive sexual life, uh, it was unbelievable. And this is the holistic approach, government, institution, uh, communities, but especially voice for children. Thank you. I definitely agree with that insight. It definitely does have to stem from the government and us. Um, and Mr. Rotzera, um, your response. Thank you. Uh, in general, UNICEF believes that uh, in order to achieve the gender equality at the, the social level is uh, essential uh, six points, six action. First, they address uh, harmful social norms, values, and attitudes and rebuild the positive ones. Second, increase uh, awareness and education about the costs of gender inequality and the hidden ways that is adversely affects everyone in society. And I want to underline that often the issue of the costs um, are very interesting uh, in order to change the things. Third, we are reviewing and amending laws and policies to be equitable and inclusive. Uh, also transforming institutions and the institutional practices that perpetuate gender-based power structures, discrimination barriers, including everything from hiring practices, educational curricula, to decision-making processes at the national and the community levels and also breaking down gender divisions of labor that dictate what is appropriate for women, men, girls, and boys to do. But the last one for me is one of the most important because uh, while women and girls most often suffer dispro disproportionately uh, from gender inequality, Gender equality is not only a women's and girls' issue, but also concerns and requires the full engagement of men and boys. If only women and or girls are involved in the discussion and in addressing gender inequality, the solution will not work. This is sure. This is both because women and girls represent only a partial perspective of society. And because most often women and girls are not in the decision making, making position necessary to implement the solution. Women and men, girls and boys have to be equal stakeholders and equally committed to solution in order for them to be accepted both formally and in practice. I would like to thank you general directors for your participation. I would like to pose a question to Mr. Rodzera. Taking into consideration your organization's actions, what would you say are the negative impacts the lack of gender equality has in our society? For this question, uh, gender inequality affects uh, everyone. And uh, as recognized in the agenda 2030, Lack of gender equality hampers development, which is uh, sustainable. Uh, in the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, gender equality was not only identified as a standalone goal, of course, the, um, the number five, but it's also mainstreamed through a number of gender-related targets. The cognizance that gender equality is essential to ensure progress across all the goals and targets. Only by ensuring that the rights of women and girls are fulfilled across all the goals, a progress that is sustainable uh, will be achieved. Uh, gender inequalities remain deeply uh, entrenched in every society and have a strong impact at the individual level, especially women and girls, such as a lack of access to decent work, occupational segregation and gender wage gap. Denial of access to basic education and the healthcare underrepresented in political and economic decision-making processes. And also gender inequalities have an impact at the social economic level. 
For example, gender gaps in education and uh, employment considerably reduce uh, productivity and economic growth. In business, uh, politics, and social, uh, society as a whole, we can only reach uh, our full potential if we use all of our talent and diversity. And finally, gender-based violence is rooted in gender discrimination. Over Those there. are very important points. Thank you again. I would now like to pass the word to Sarah. Thank you, Maura. Gender discrimination can be tackled in a number of different ways. One of them, as we mentioned, is educating the youth, but there are certainly other ways. General Director Ozera and General Director Fatarella, how do your organizations contribute, both on a national and international level, in properly tackling the issue of gender discrimination? So sorry, I mean, I thought I was on mute. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the, um, there are different things that organization that Save the Children is doing in, um, in supporting gender equality throughout the world. Uh, and actually, there is, uh, uh, of course, uh, a work that we are doing, uh, um, especially with children, in terms of uh, uh, making children be active, uh, uh, playing an active role. Uh, in uh, defending their rights uh, and in defending uh, the, the gender equality principle, which means uh, it is not only for girls, but also for boys to participate uh, to debate in which uh, social norms and stereotypes uh, are taken into account uh, and are seen as a way of evolving society and not uh, as a way of involving it. Uh, the second piece is, of course, uh, running on the field uh, programs that do support uh, uh, girls from the very starting age, so from the pregnancy of, of their mothers, so to have access to the right uh, level of health services, uh, to provide education to uh, girls in school, uh, to prioritize uh, uh, girls' uh, uh, violence, uh, and also, I mean, uh, uh, support in fighting against uh, child marriage. So all programs uh, are run uh, with a, a gender lens to be sure that, uh, that girls' uh, needs are taken into account. Then, of course, there is a level of um, uh, uh, work which is done with uh, um, institution governments uh, uh, and uh, with uh, uh, other players like, of course, uh, UNICEF and many others to change uh, the culture and the norms. So it's important that there is a, a high level of effort which is spent in uh, advocacy because uh, uh, what you learn from the field is the evidence uh, that can support uh, the uh, actions that you do in advocating for uh, girls' rights. So again, uh, there is no uh, only one thing that Save the Children is doing, there are several. Uh, and uh, I would try to restress the keywords that are participation and putting children at the center of the programs that we are doing, of course, working on the field, and of, of course, uh, doing advocacy based on the evidence that you learn from the field. And we do this uh, both uh, in uh, Italy than worldwide. Of course, you adapt all these three elements according to the um, countries and to the environments uh, that you uh, that you face uh, but it's crucial that uh, all are tackled to uh, uh, to really push uh, for the best ever result that you can get thank you miss fatarella and uh, mr rozera thank you sarah uh... For UNICEF, gender equality is critical and central in all the UNICEF's work. It is not possible for UNICEF to realize its mission of, advoc uh, of advocating for the protection of children's rights without promoting and attaining gender equality in the program. UNICEF promotes equal outcomes for girls and boys and its policies, programs, partnership and advocacy efforts seeks to contribute to uh, poverty reduction and the achievement of the SDGs through result-oriented, effective, innovative, and well-coordinated action 
that achieves the protection, survival, and development of girls and boys on an equal basis. In order to promote gender equality, UNICEF focuses on reducing inequality, strengthening economies and building stable, resilient societies that give all individuals, including, including boys and men, the opportunity to fulfill, the, uh, fulfill their potential. UNICEF builds a partnership across the global community to accelerate gender equality. In all areas of our work, we integrate strategies that address gender-specific discrimination and disadvantage. This means uh, partnering with national health sector to expand the quality maternal care and support the professionalization of the mostly female frontline community health workforce. It means promoting the role of women in the design and delivery of water, sanitation, and hygiene ecosystems. And it means working with the education sector to ensure that girls and boys strive in their learning and find pathways to meaningful employment. For uh, adolescents, girls especially, UNICEF invests in skills building to further their economic empowerment as entrepreneurs, innovators, and leaders. And we have a lot of uh, success programs in, on this. We focus on providing learning environments as at a time and the place that suit girls' individual circumstances. We also work on uh, assistive technologies for girls with disabilities. And one of the expansion of digital platform, vocational training and uh, apprenticeship. In Italy, uh, the promotion of gender equality is uh, mainstreamed to all the activities that we carry out. We work with the, the institution through our advocacy action to ensure that the laws and policy on equal opportunities align with the latest recommendation addressed to our country by the UN Committee on the Right of the Child and other international standards on the subject. An, an example above all, we see that the working table uh, set up at the Ministry of the Family and Equal Opportunities for definition of the next national plan against trafficking in human beings, paying particular attention to the vulnerability of girls and adolescents. Gender equality education is one of the main themes that UNICEF Italy includes in every educational proposal, guaranteeing the same rights for boys and girls is fundamental to guarantee the quality of the education, an expression of the principle enshrining the Convention on the Rights of Childhood and Adolescents. Moreover, in Italy, UNICEF specifically works in order to prevent and respond to gender-based violence affecting migrants and refugees, uh, refugee women and girls, of course, that face uh, gender-based violence-related risks before during and after the immigration journey to, to Italy. UNICEF uh, provides uh, critical life-saving services and information in order to enhance the range of accessibility of um, gender-based violence prevention, mitigation and response services for refugees and migrants, uh, women and children in Italy through a multi-sectorial uh, response with the child protection. The intervention focus on strengthening the protection system through service provision, knowledge generation, evidence-based advocacy and capacity development of frontline workers, working closely with the strategic institutions such as ministries, university, and the civil society organization, as well as mass media uh, through the diverse communication channels. This approach, uh, approach is uh, based on the UNICEF uh, uh, gender-based violence um, theory, of, theory of change, which supports better access to quality services, decrease of the li likelihood of uh, gender-based violence, and aims to address the root causes of gender-based uh, violence through policy and legal and legal reform. Over. 
Thank you very much for your responses. I will now pass the word to my colleague, Liana. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, General Directors, for the thought-provoking explanations, ideas, examples, and proposals for betterment that we have seen so far. Before concluding the interview and taking into account everything that has been said so far, I would like to pose a final question to both. General Directors, what advice would you give to our generation to commit to building a more just and inclusive world? I think it's the toughest question uh, that you have posed today, but actually it's one of the toughest question ever. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I have a sort of uh, advices or inspiring ideas, but I'd like to stress two things. The very first thing is uh, get the best education you can have. Education is key. There is no, I mean, I, I always say that education is life-saving uh, because it provides uh, a lot of um, opportunities, but also open minds uh, uh, give you the autonomy of reading uh, things around you uh, and uh, um, make you better people. So the very first thing, if you want to change the world, uh, get the best ever experience you can have through schools, which is not only getting expert on a specific topic, you may become engineer, doctor or whatever else, uh, but do develop your social skills, your inte emotional intelligence, your capacity to really uh, work in team, uh, understand the di diversity as a key element of uh, um, construction and not deconstruction. So the very first thing is get educated. The second thing for me, speak out and speak out today because uh, I mean, your future is today. I have the pleasure to work with many, with and for many children uh, in Italy and worldwide. And one of the very last time I meet uh, the uh, children that are part of uh, a young movement for Save the Children Italy, they told me, I mean, our future is today. So we have to act now to influence what will happen later. And, and I thought for me, it was a sort of revolutionary because we always think the future will be tomorrow, but actually they changed completely my perspective. And uh, when you speak out, um, uh, and I hope you will speak out to defend your rights, but also the rights of, of, of other people and other children that may be in a much more difficult situation than yours, uh, please do see um, values and behaviors uh, and do not see where this person is coming from uh, or uh, uh, the appearance uh, or don't get uh, the stereotype and social norms uh, driving uh, your thinking because you are the one who can really influence uh, uh, what will happen tomorrow so again for me is uh, two words education and and speaking out and the third thing is do it now and don't wait for others to do you on your behalf it will be your words much more than ours and thank you very much for the great opportunity to be here with you today absolutely absolutely thank you so much mr Rozzera, on to you thank you jana and I completely agree with um, daniela and um, I think that answering this, <laughs> this question gives uh, me so much responsibility. I think in general that uh, is a very, it's very easy to fall in the, to the trap of the gender discrimination also in our day-by-day -day life. Um, I think that promoting a more just and inclusive uh, world is not just about legal victories and international uh, agreements. Is more in the way we talk, think, and act every day can have an impact in promoting gender equality. I can shortly say that uh, gender equality starts from us, and there are simple everyday actions that any of us can do to advance gender equality. This includes uh, challenging our unconscious gender bias and stereotypes stand up against sexist and discrimination remarks, read and learn more about gender issues and the specific challenges affecting women and girls in the world. 
It's up to me, it's up to you, it's up to everybody. Thank you for the, this uh, involvement in this discussion. Thank you. These are definitely some points to keep in mind if we really want to leave the world a better place than we found it for the future generations. Thank you again, General Director Fatarella and General Director Lozera for your valued presence in this conference.